floating head. Hey everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. And this lesson we're going to take a look at a Keith Richards style uh, rhythm guitar part. It's got a lot of Keith inspired uh, twang. He tends to play a little bit more country. And I, I think you're going to like this, even if you're not a fan of, of country. So um, it's for the beginner, intermediate, or advanced player. If you want to download the jam track or the tablature for free, you can do so at ActiveMelody.com. So let's take a look at this Keith Richards rhythm guitar part. All right, so the nice thing about this lesson is it's pretty simple to do. So if you're a beginner, you should definitely try and, and keep up with this one. Now, if you'll notice, I'm using the exact same jam track that I used in that blues driving rhythm in the key of A lesson that I did a few weeks back. And I did that intentionally to show you that depending on what you play on the rhythm guitar, you can give the band a very different sound. So in that other one, it was much more driving and heavy. And this has more of a relaxed kind of country feel. The band is exactly the same. But what, what's going on with the rhythm guitar is really defining the song. So uh, what I'm doing, I'm playing a lot of these Keith Richards licks. And um, Keith Richards is great because he does a lot of uh, kind of country twang. And when you do these kind of hammer-on, it's almost like a hammer-on chord, uh, what, what they're doing or what he's doing is he's emulating the pedal steel guitar that you hear in a lot of uh, old honky-tonk country. And it's actually used today even in a lot of country. But that's what's kind of going on there. To, they're trying to emulate that sound on the guitar, on the electric guitar. So anyway, uh, you may, you, whether you're a big fan of country or not, you got to incorporate some of these country twang licks because they're, uh, they're fantastic and they really kind of lend themselves to uh, rock and roll as well. So, okay, the first thing that goes on is what I'm doing there is I'm borrowing the ninth um, fret, uh, the first four strings, but I'm only playing the D, the G, and the B string. So I'm only playing the fourth, third, and second string. I'm not playing that high E string. And I'm starting with just those three, with just the bar. And that's a that would be an E chord, by the way. That's just, you're playing it up here. And you're not playing the full chord, but you're playing those three strings of it. And then we're going to hammer on like this. And what I'm doing when I hammer on is I'm... I put my middle finger on the 10th fret B string and I put my ring finger on the 11th fret D string. And what I'm doing there is I'm creating, believe it or not, that's an A chord. Now I know you probably learned to make your A chord down here, or like that. And then in the Bo Diddley lesson, remember we learned to make an A here. Now we're playing an A up here. And so that kind of starting with the E, and hammering into that A is what really gives it that, you're playing ahead of the beat a little bit. You're anticipating with the first chord. And it kind of gives it that, again, that country twang feel. I love that sound. So what I did there is I go. So I, I go hammer on, release. Then I just slide everything down to the seventh fret. And that's all I'm doing. And again, remember, I'm only playing the, 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 the fourth, third and second string, the, the D, G, and B string. Okay, that's the first part. Okay, so then from this D chord, I jump down and play that little hammer on. And what I'm doing there is, I'm, remember, I'm on the seventh fret here, barring the first four strings. I jump up and grab another string, so I'm barring the first five strings. And then I hammer on. To the uh, to the ninth fret there on the fifth string or the A string, and what I'm doing is I'm only playing the A string and the uh, D string or the fifth and fourth. Hammer on to the to the uh, ninth fret, and then I just come up while that's hammered down, and I just hit you know kind of complete the chord by hitting the the G and the D string or the third and fourth string. So it's actually pretty simple. All right, so then we come back, we'll repeat the A part. Back to the D. And then this time I went, 
which is kind of a Hendrix sounding thing. And, and all that is, is it's just a hammer on pull off thing. But I'm just barring, I'm continuing to bar the seventh fret, first four strings, playing the G and D string there. Come down and grab the, the uh, ninth fret A string, and then I go. So that's hammering on to the ninth fret uh, uh, D string. It's a hammer on pull off. Ha hammer on, pull off, then I come down and grab that um, that A string again on, or the fifth string on the ninth fret. So let me do it slowly. Now you may want to practice that, and you don't have to do that note for note. You could do a variation of that. You could just play or. You know, just come up with some other little riff, or just repeat what we did the first time, if that's too challenging, but that's what I'm doing there. Okay, so then we repeat the A part, back to the D, we do the little hammer-on again. Now remember when you do that hammer-on, to when you hammer on with your ring finger, leave it in place. As soon as it hits down, you lock it down, and you leave it there. And uh, then we have to go to the E part of the song, and to do that, you slide that exact same thing that you just did there, note for note, up, but you do it up two frets. So slide that whole thing up two frets, and that works over the E chord. So there's your D chord, there's your E chord. And then I kind of close with this little. And with that, all I'm doing is I'm sliding up to the, uh, I'm using my middle finger and my ring finger and I'm sliding up, I'm playing that on the, the B and the G string, uh, second and third string. My middle finger is on the 12th fret uh, B string and my ring finger is on the uh, 13th fret G string. So you slide in and you go, take that same shape, slide it down two frets, so then you just bar the uh, the second and third string there on the ninth fret. So then you're barring on the eleventh fret. You're barring the uh, uh, you know the first four strings or so. But you're only playing the uh, fourth and third string or the D and G string. And then you do the same thing down two frets. Let me do that slowly. And that's it really. Then it, it goes right back into the, the little A run. Now hopefully this lesson isn't too simple for, for you that are uh, a little more advanced. But even if you are more advanced, these are licks that uh, you can pull out no matter uh, where you're at in the game. So uh, I use these all the time. I love that kind of country uh, feel. You don't always want to do it, but there's definitely a time and a place for it. And what we're trying to do with these rhythm lessons is get you past the old, you know, the old strum. A lot of people they get into um, sort of a, a mental block. You think that you know rhythm guitar is just all down here in the first position, strumming chords, and, and that's important. That's a big part of it, especially on an acoustic guitar. But when you get into playing with a band. You really want to spice things up and uh, let the rhythm guitar um, accent what what the the rest of the guys are doing in the band. So I hope that's helpful for you. That's all I got in this lesson. We'll see you in the next one.